What's up guys? My name is Josiah Flays, owner of FTF Freight Shop, and over the last couple days I've been designing this display on my computer. I put it all together and now you can see it built in real life. With this display, we'll be able to explain and demonstrate every single aspect of your front suspension and how it relates to drifting, what it changes when you adjust certain things and how it will affect how you can drive. Where you and your buddy might have the same alignment values, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have the same performance because there is so many ways to adjust this front suspension. We are gonna go into detail on each individual aspect and try to do it in layman's terms so that everybody is able to understand in a language that we can all grasp um, without getting too complex. We're gonna break it down into each individual part and you'll see exactly how this display moves those parts and what it does to affect your alignment. Okay, so starting with caster, there's really only two ways that you're gonna be able to adjust caster on your car. That is gonna be here at your lower control arm where I can simply, on any car, you can usually thread in and thread out different portions of the arm and this will effectively change your caster. But as you can see what this does is it's going to change your alignment, your toe is going to be changed and you will need to adjust all of these different aspects as you adjust them. The other part where you can change your caster will be up top here where your strut tower normally is. For this display, we're able to adjust it on here. We can slide this back and forth, increasing and decreasing your caster. And how this would be done on a car is typically with camber or caster plates that can be rotated or you can move the top of your coilover forward or backwards and also in and out to adjust your camber. We will go much further in depth on how to adjust your caster and what exactly it's gonna change in depth. But for this video, I'm just showing you how everything works on this display. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is camber. Camber can be adjusted three different ways, typically on uh, a McPherson strut angle kit. So on our display, we're gonna be able to adjust the camber with the lower control arm. And then we're going to be able to adjust the camber typically with the adjustment that comes with your coilovers. And on this display is going to be shown here. So that is the second way that you can adjust your camber. And then the third way, which most McPherson strut coilovers come with a top slot and this is gonna be able to adjust your camber at the wheel. This camber is adjusted separately from your KPI angle. This is a really important thing to note when you and your buddy have the same camber setting. It does not mean that it's gonna handle the same. You could have different KPI settings. So those are typically the three ways that you can adjust your camber. The next thing we'll talk about is toe, static toe to be specific because toe changes throughout your steering axis range. To adjust toe, we simply have a adjustable tie rod here. This is using all the same components that we put on our angle kits, um, even down to the inner tie rod rack adapter. So you have a right hand thread here, a left hand thread here, clockwise extends it, counterclockwise retracts it. That is how we're going to show you how to adjust and what your toe does on this display. The next thing to discuss is the roll center of your car and the way that we're making this adjustable on this display is simply with a nice design on the lower portion of this knuckle where I have these slots in the knuckle and they're going to give us different positions of roll center. Okay. And how roll center is going to play a major role in the performance of your car. The way that we're going to explain Ackerman on this car is with this portion of the knuckle here where we can change the relation of the tie rod and the control arm to the wheel. And this can simply be adjusted like this. And this is going to significantly display 
how different Ackerman settings change your lead and trail wheel with the same stroke in the rack. And we can show you the stroke in the rack here with these adjustable stoppers. So we will effectively show you what's happening when you run what Ackerman. With this display, we're going to show you how the KPI is adjusted on your car and what it actually does. But for this episode, I'm just going to show you how it's adjusted. Um, for this, we can adjust the KPI by lengthening this portion of the display. Lengthening this is going to do two things. It's going to change the camber and the KPI. The KPI is the angle if you drew a line straight through this bearing and this bearing. So as we move this in, this angle is going to increase and this plays a massive role in drifting. Again, if you and your buddy got the same settings with camber, caster and tow, they may not handle the same simply because of angles like this, your KPI angle, which stands for kingpin inclination. Your KPI can also be changed by lengthening and shortening the lower control arm. Lengthening, shortening the lower control arm, as you all know, also will change your camber setting. So camber and KPI kind of go hand in hand, unless you can adjust it separately here. Once we get a wheel installed on the front, we will then be able to show you scrub radius, how it's measured and how you can adjust it. Scrub radius is going to go hand in hand with your KPI angle and then where the wheel contacts the ground and where the KPI angle lands with it. That is going to be effectively your scrub radius. There's no way to show you how to adjust it other than what you've already seen with uh, camber and KPI. So once we get a wheel on here, you will be able to see that in the following videos. The next thing to talk about is what a lot of people like to discuss and not too many people are actually familiar with how it works is trail. Trail is going to be what you can see me adjusting here. It is the offset of the ball joint in relation to where the wheel is mounted. Trail and caster do similar things with different grip advantages and disadvantages, different advantages with jacking and all that stuff. So when you give trail to any kind of angle kit or reduce it or adjust it, you're going to have pros or cons um, by adjusting your trail. And we're going to go in how that is adjusted, how it works and what it does for you in terms of drifting. Um, and next important subject to talk about is the rack offset in relation to the ball joint on the knuckle. A very common modification for a lot of rear rack cars is to relocate your rack. This is moving the rack forward. With this display, I can show you what the rack offset does and how it affects your drifting and what it does, how it binds, how it does everything that everyone talks about and the reason why we move it as close as possible um, is gonna be really easily shown in this. We're also gonna be able to show you bump steer and how that works with uh, offset to the rack. Bump steer can be changed every time you adjust your caster or anytime you put an angle kit on and correct your roll center, bump steer is affected. So we will be able to show you your bump steer and your rack offset really well with this display. One of the last things of the basic geometry and understanding of your suspension in the front in relation to drifting is just gonna be our suspension travel. With a McPherson strut, you typically have a spring here with a ram all of your suspension travel is done through this shaft where a double wishbone suspension performs differently. If we get really good feedback on this, we will definitely go into double wishbone suspension because I designed this jig to allow for that. So for your suspension travel, I simply just have this able to slide up and down on this ram. I can stop anywhere I want and show how it's gonna perform under compression and at full droop. And I can just simply lock it in place for the display purposes. So that's pretty much everything that we're gonna talk about. We might throw a couple extra things in there. We can, we can definitely elaborate on it, but I basically designed this to allow for a very good visual understanding of what's going on with your car, how you should set up your kits, why you should set up your kits that way, and also understanding what is done with your kits. All these companies are advertising this and that and correcting this and correcting that. If you watch all these videos, that'll be up to you to decide on what you want because drifting in Japan versus drifting in the US versus drifting in Europe versus drifting in Australia, everyone typically has a different style of drifting, which requires different settings on your roll center, which requires different alignment specs, different scrub radiuses. All these things play a massive role in how the driver and the car behave. And we're gonna go into that 
as simple as we can do it. Oh, right, right. Hit the bell alert button, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're going to want to do. That's it. See you guys next one. Yeah, we will see you on a bunch of videos that have to do with this. Oh, what we're also going to do is color code absolutely everything. This, this display is going to be black, but we're going to do like the arm in green, uh, the bottom of the knuckle portion here, we'll do red, the knuckle will do blue, yellow, white, you name it. And then we're going to have a legend here on the video that's going to tell you what is what while you're watching the video. So you have a little green box and then you'll have lower control arm. You will know the entire time you're watching this video, what is what the lower control arm is going to be green and so on. We're going to powder coat this and do that um, within the next couple days so that the next time you see this display, it'll be an array of different colors. Um, that's for you guys to see because I'm sure it looks like quite the concoction going on with all these things and slots and holes. But uh, when we color code it, you guys will have a really good idea of what's going on. So see us. I will see you. No, you'll see me on the next video.